Hello, and welcome back to Miss History. I'm Rhonda, and this is where I talk about odd or unsolved historical mysteries. And if that sounds like something that you might be interested in, then please consider subscribing. I hope that you are all enjoying October and the cooler weather. I know here in the AZ, we're pretty excited because it's been in the 80s during the day, which for most people in, in the northern part of the U.S., you know, that's like your summer temperatures, but um, it actually, that's lovely here, and we just all appreciate the break from the triple digits. Holy my goodness. Anyway, that's not why you're here. <laughs> I am here to talk about the fairy tale that we are all very likely familiar with that turns out may have been something that actually happened during the Middle Ages in Hamelin, Germany. Who was the Pied Piper of Hamelin? You remember the story of the Pied Piper, yeah? Okay, so the Grimm brothers wrote stuff about it. Um, Robert Browning had a poem that he wrote about it. Even Disney had their own little take on it with Pied Piper Mickey. And, you know, the story is told to us, you know, like somebody's fanciful little story, a little whatever, entertaining. Um, in reality, it was likely rooted in a historical event from the 1200s. Wild, right? Okay. Oh, and Crispin St. Peter even wrote a song called The Pied Piper, but I don't think that was the same. I think he was just trying to get some girl to go out with him, like, based on the lyrics of the song. Regardless of which version you're familiar with, unless it's the song, because that's completely unrelated and it's it's a catchy tune, and now it's going to be stuck in my head for the rest of the day. Anyway, they, whoever they are, say that every legend has a basis in fact. Maybe. Maybe not. That said, many of the ridiculous fables and fictional stories that we are all familiar with are rooted in at least somewhat actual history because they say the truth is often stranger than fiction. Many of the tellings of the story kind of all start out the same. The year is 1284 in Hamlin, Germany, and they have a rat infestation of epic proportions. They don't know what to do with these rats. So one day, a man clothed in brightly colored, colored clothing, words, and a flute of some sorts, said to the town, hey, I can get rid of your rats for you. And they were like, okay, well, I'm going to do it for a fee. So was like, yeah, we'll just we'll pay him. Okay, whatever. Yeah, okay, get rid of the rats. So he starts playing his little flute thing, right? It entrances the rats and they all follow him out of town. Now, it depends on which version you're listening to, but in one version, they were led to a watery grave and in another version, they were led to these caves outside of town. So, they're gone. The town is happy. Yay, no more rats. The piper goes down and he's like, okay, your rats are gone. Pay the piper. And the town refused to pay the piper. Yeah, he wasn't happy about that. But nobody would be. Why would you work for free? Why would you do something and go, hey, you agreed to pay me. I I performed that service and now, now you need to pay me. And now you're not going to pay me. And so 
I don't know. I suppose he could have just led the rats back, but he didn't. No, he did not. Instead, he vowed revenge. And on June 26th, which is the day of Saints John and Paul there, I think, he went back to the town and he started playing his little magical flute again. But this time it attracted the attention of the town's children and they would follow the piper out of town, presumably to the same fate as the rats. In one telling, three children would be left behind. One was lame and obviously couldn't keep up. Another was deaf and couldn't hear the music. And a third was blind, but couldn't see where the other children were going. The dark. It is a dark tale to be sure, but it's one that has stuck around for centuries. Now, I cannot have an episode of Miss History without having some actual history. It's in the name. <laughs> Hamlin, Germany is located in north central Germany along the Weiser River, southwest of Hanover and west of Berlin. Some records say that the monast that a monastery, the Abbey of St. Boniface, was founded as early as 851 AD by monks from Fulda. A village would grow around the abbey and eventually a town would be chartered at around 1200 and that would be passed to the Dukes of Brunswick and later would become a member of the Hanseatic League. But was there any truth to the fairy tales that we heard? Maybe. There are early records from Hamlin itself that show that it's quite possibly true. The tale was depicted in a stained glass window that was created for the Church of Hamlin and dates back to around 1300. That church was destroyed in 1660, but there are several written accounts that have, that have survived. One of the oldest is from the Lundberg, sorry, Germany, manuscript. And it says, quote, in the year of 1284, on the day of saints, John and Paul on June 26th, by a piper clothed in many kinds of colors, 130 children born in Hamlin were seduced and lost at the place of execution near the Koppen. Even town records, there's one entry from 1384 that says, it is 100 years since our children left. The street that the children were allegedly led out of town on is called, I'm not pronouncing that, but roughly translated it means street without drums. No one is allowed to play music or dance on that street even to this day likely because of the tragedy that I occurred, that I occurred, that occurred. Worthy of note is that allegedly 
the rats were absent from the earlier accounts of the story and seem to have only been added to the story sometime around the middle of the 16th century. The stained glass window, yes, was destroyed, but that was the drawing that I showed you. That was a drawn depiction of what the stained glass window apparently looked like in the church. And there are other early writings. So that stained glass window and the other early writings from that time about this story don't mention any kind of plague or rats. What's up with that? So what really happened to the children of Hamlin? in 1284? If it wasn't an act of revenge by a magical piper leading rats away and then not being paid, then what was it? There are theories as to what happened, including all of the children died of some sort of natural cause and the piper was said to be the personification of death. And if you associate rats with the black death, then perhaps the children were victims to the plague. But keep in mind with this theory, the black death was most severe across Europe in the 1300s after the children of Hamlin went missing. Another theory, number two, is that the children were sent away by their parents due to the extreme poverty that they were living in. And it was hoped that, I guess, they would be able to find work in other towns. This theory may be more true than not, as family names that were common to Hamlin from that time start to show up with frequencies in the areas of Ockermark and Prignitz near Berlin. I know I said that one right. <sighs> A third theory is that the children died from a form of dancing mania. And these dancing manias included a one that was recorded that happened in 1237, where a large group of children would travel from Erfurt to Arnstadt, jumping and dancing the whole way. It said that some children died and others suffered some post effects from all of this dancing. What was that? Dance Dance Revolution? Wasn't that a game? A video game? So maybe that's what it was. It was a Dance Dance Revolution of medieval proportions. And that's how the children died. Another theory is that the children were recruited to take part in the children's crusades, which were part of the medieval crusades in a bid to win back the Holy Land. Or a really dark theory is that the Pied Piper was actually a pedophile who crept into the town of Hanlon under the cover of darkness while the children slept and spirited them away. All 130 of them? None of these theories explain the particular date that was cited in the town records for the loss of the children and the collective sense of trauma as a result of the event, with one person even questioning, did something happen that officials had been covering up? Something so traumatic that it was transmitted orally for so long in the town's collective memory over decades and even centuries? Maybe. Town records state that it was June 26, 
1284 when the children disappeared. This is the date of the pagan midsummer celebration. It is also, as I mentioned earlier, the day of Saints John and Paul. So if you're looking at the pagan theory, it was said that regions of Germany would celebrate the midsummer by lighting fires in the hills, which lends to kind of a dark outcome for the children at the hands of Piper. Because according to this story, the Piper was a pagan shaman who played his flute, leading the children out into the hills for the local midsummer celebrations when a local Christian faction would notice them and attack the group and massacre everyone in it. Or you look at the Saints John and Paul Day and the children were led away by the Piper to local monasteries and then they weren't killed, which that sounds happier. Today, you can travel, even today, today, like right now, go to Hamlin, Germany. And a piper will lead you through the town. There's a guy that his job is to dress up in brightly colored tights and, and everything else with a cape, with a flute. And he's there to meet and greet all of the tourists that come to town. And he leads them on tours of the city. Le legit, that's his job. That'd be kind of a cool job to have. Anyway. The Rottenfängerhaus is a popular attraction for tourists. It was originally built in 1602 and once had an inscription somewhere in there about the Pied Piper. Today, it's a city-owned building and is a Pied Piper-themed restaurant. Each year on June 26th, the town, the town holds a festival to commemorate the anniversary of the mystery of the missing children. The celebration is known as Rat Catcher's Day, which is kind of dark if you really start to think about it. Also, part of the tourist trap of the town is the fact that you can purchase any number, any manner of rat-themed merchandise in gift shops and online. And there is a bakery that you can go buy rat-shaped treats from. There's even an officially licensed Hamlin-themed monopoly. Capitalism. So the mystery of what happened to the children's, the children's, the children has never been solved. And, you know, considering it happened in 1284, it's not looking good. Also, if the Pied Piper fairy tale was based on actual events, could other ones also be? Maybe. Maybe I should do a series like that. And, you know, we can all find out together. Should I do that? Let me know down in the comments. But what are your thoughts about the Pied Piper of Hamlin? Was it a real event? Well, historically, they say it was. But was it the same as the fairy tale that we were told? Or something much darker and more nefarious? Or, you know, maybe the kids did leave and go start working in other towns around Germany. Either way, a little terrifying. Let me know your thoughts about it down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Click that bell icon to be notified every time I post a new video. And until next time, stay safe out there and 
watch out for guys carrying flutes in bright tights because they don't sound very good. I'll see you next week. Bye.